home labs are super important if you're wanting to get into cybersecurity and IT. You know, being able to learn these things on your own time and to be able to make sure that you're fully grasping them, that really puts you a step ahead of the competition. It also gives you an environment to work on your passion projects. If there's a programming language that you want to learn, you know, an application you want to build, a home lab is a perfect place to be able to work on that. So that way, you know, if anything breaks, you're not breaking anything important that you personally own. You know, it's, it could be in a virtual environment or in a Raspberry Pi where you can very easily turn around and, and start from scratch again uh, or save it somewhere and then re-em it. Now, of course, that leads me into just a quick review on, you know, the two main types of home labs that we really want to build here. You can build your home lab in a virtual environment or using Raspberry Pis. You could also use a combination of these two. Now, sure, again, you can use uh, your primary operating system as a lab, but that's not recommended. Again, if you break something and you break your own, you break your main operating system, that's that's not good. You don't want to do that, right? So again, you know, it's much easier to clean up an accident if it's in a virtual environment because you can just go back to a prior image or prior snapshot. Now, real quick, we're going to jump into my home lab and kind of break down all the different components. Okay, so to start off, I'm gonna go ahead and show you uh, my gaming computer. This is what I use for my virtual environment. I also got a large 4K monitor. There are links in the description for both of these. Uh, but the, virt or the virtual machines, yeah, I'll show you here in a second. But this gaming computer, I, whenever I got it, uh, I got it a few years ago. I, it came originally, I believe, with 16 gigabytes of RAM. So I went ahead and upgraded it with, uh, with an extra stick. So it has 32 gigs of RAM now. Um, and I'll go ahead and show it off here a little bit. So of course you can see, you know, you can add, it, it's got, you know, an HDMI port, some USB ports, uh, you know, some more ports over here. Um, this monitor is curved, it's 4K, uh, it's awesome. I've really enjoyed it, you know, you can quarter it, and it, honestly, like each quarter is just about the size of a laptop screen. <laughs> so, you know, you can really fit, you know, whenever you're quartering things and you, you know, you're kind of got, you're working things down here, you can really have a lot of information really right at your fingertips. So uh, I'll go ahead and show this. So, you know, I'm, I use VirtualBox for my virtual environment. Uh, I really recommend VirtualBox. You don't have to pay for a license to use VirtualBox. Uh, it's very flexible. You're able to do all kinds of different things with VirtualBox, as you can see. I have a Kali Linux machine. Uh, I've included a link in this video to my home lab video, and it'll kind of show you, you know, what all you can do with the home lab, how to start these up. Uh, and, and use them but you know just right now wanting to show off uh, you know this home lab setup here just the you know the, the monitor and the computer uh, there are links in the description to both so real quick let's go over some pros and cons here uh, the pros to having a laptop well one it's portable uh, if you're a, a student you know you can take your laptop with you to class you can you know follow along with a lab on your own virtual environment. If you have any questions or a problem that you'd like to bounce off of like a professor or a mentor or somebody, you know, you can take your laptop with you. Um, you know, it's not that hard to get it started up. And really gaming laptops, they're still pretty powerful. Uh, you can do a lot with them. Uh, you can have just about anything as you can a desktop. Now that kind of brings me to some cons is you know, it's not that modular. In fact, you can't really upgrade, you know, aside from the RAM, it's very difficult to upgrade certain parts of the hardware with your gaming laptop. And that's where a desktop comes in handy or a tower. And uh, the unfortunate, you know, the con of a tower is you can't really bring it around with you everywhere you go, uh, but you are able to upgrade it much easier than you are a gaming laptop. So just some things to keep in mind. I've included links in the description for both of these if there are things that, you know, if either of them, you know, pique your interest and you're wanting to build your own home lab, uh, I'd really recommend building a desktop. Uh, that can be a great practice just to kind of get an idea of, you know, what the different parts of a machine are, uh, how it works. Uh, and then, you know, once you know you, you've built it, not only do you have that feeling of accomplishment of like, yeah, I built it, but also, uh, you know, it's modular. So if you want to upgrade it, you know, say a new graphics card comes out, 
uh, then you know you're able to upgrade your graphics card and, and stuff like that. Now the monitor I recommend for just about everybody. Uh, I, the the monitor is about you know 400 bucks. I've included again a link in the description for that. I've really enjoyed it. You, you're really it's just big enough that you know you can quarter it and, and have a, just a ton of information, not have to be looking around at multiple different screens. It's all right in front of you. Uh, it's it's 4K, so it's clear. Um, you know, you're able to configure all kinds of things uh, on the monitor. You can adjust your brightness, your contrast, all those kinds of things to make it, you know, easier on the eyes. Um, and it is just, and it's been very, very helpful. Next, we're going to talk about the Raspberry Pis. Now, as you can see here, I have my Raspberry Pi uh, lab set up really right next to uh, my virtual home lab. So, you know, say I, I want to spin up some virtual machines. Well. I can have them, you know, communicate with the Raspberry Pis and vice versa. And that, that's very helpful if you're wanting to set up, you know, kind of a robust, you know, home lab. You can do a whole lot with that. Now, if you haven't seen my home lab video, again, there's a link uh, here at the end of the video at the end screen that, you know, will take you to the home lab video. I'd really recommend, uh, you know, watching that to kind of get an idea of what we've got here. But the main thing that we're going to look at here is we've got two Raspberry Pis. Uh, I got a Raspberry Pi stand for it. Um, it can it can hold up to four Raspberry Pis, um, and that's awesome. <laughs> if you if you know you're wanting to make a cluster of Raspberry Pis, this stand uh, is easy to put together. If you like working with your hands, it's a very fun you know quick little project, uh, and you can really stand up a, a nice cluster of four Raspberry Pis with that. They also include little fans here at the very top. Uh, and those fans, you know, will keep, of course, the Raspberry Pi cooled, uh, and those are very handy. I also use this hub. It's got an Ethernet port, uh, several USB ports. You can see the the SD card port here, uh, as well as you know, aux, HDMI, and VGA. Uh, and that's been very helpful too, in case you know you're wanting to work on multiple Raspberry Pis, but you know you don't want to keep unplugging things. You can just put it all in the hub, and all you need to worry about is plugging the hub in. Now the cool thing about this hub is it's USB-C. The unfortunate thing is that with Raspberry Pis, well Raspberry Pis don't have a USB-C port. So I got a USB-C adapter. Again, there are links in the descriptions for all of these. I also use a, uh, a pretty powerful, just for charging my mobile devices, not so much with you know, the home lab, but it's just super handy, is this, uh, is this USB charging hub. Now this is super powerful, it's got six different ports on it it charges super fast it's just so great you know you're able to you just get one of these <laughs> set it up on your desk and you can charge just about all of your home devices <laughs> right so it's very nice now for my raspberry pis i also use this acer monitor now i got this monitor uh last summer i also got this stand uh this stand's been very helpful it, you know provides a little bit of room now if you have your home uh lab and you have a laptop my gaming laptop will actually fit under here. I have it over here since I'm working with it, but uh, there's plenty of room for laptops and other devices that you know you might want to store down here. Uh, right now, I just have my mic or my mouse and uh, my keyboard down there, uh, but you know you can really put a lot back there. The monitor is pretty good. Uh, it's it's 1080p. Uh, links in the description for again for all of these. Now the next thing I want to run through is the different. Uh, you know different cybersecurity tools or IT tools that you can use. The first thing is going to be the long-range antenna. This is pretty cool. I've used this. Uh, I've used this with an app called Kismet. Uh, it allows you to uh, see devices at a long range that are broadcasting uh, their idea, their their MAC address. So if there's any kind of wireless endpoint or any device that has its Wi-Fi chip turned on, uh, you'll be able to find it with Kismet. Uh, it's Portable, you're able to plug it in. You can plug it into a, a Raspberry Pi, throw it in your backpack, and go war walking or war driving. Uh, and that's pretty cool. And again, you know, you just take it apart, you just unscrew it, put it away. Pretty nice. I also have this Wi Fi dongle. Uh, that's pretty nice. Uh, you know, sometimes in case, you know, if the, if the Raspberry Pis aren't working or if one of the virtual machines aren't working, I'll just plug this in and, and it'll directly, you know, connect to, if it's a virtual machine, it'll connect to the virtual machine and provide a unique IP address just for that virtual machine. The next device is a pineapple. 
and this allows you to create uh, wireless hotspots. Now, if you are a cybersecurity professional, this allows you to create, a, you know, maybe if you're doing like a penetration test, this allows you to create a, you know, a fake hotspot. It, you know, if you're wanting to see if anybody, you know, is trained on not connecting to unknown Wi-Fi hotspots, but you know, you're able to do a, a whole lot of these with Wi-Fi pineapples. Uh, same thing as the as the long range antenna. You know, you're, it's super mobile, super small. You can just, you know, plug it in, put it in your backpack and go. Or, you know, or do whatever you want. It's not that big, not that obtrusive, uh, which is, it's very nice. Now, the last thing is I have actually two different GPS dongles. Uh, and I'm going to have to give honest reviews with these. Uh, they're both fine. They both work. Uh, I've, you know, had limited success with getting them going, but that's probably more user error, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not great. But anyway, the, these are actually, they're pretty good. Uh, you know, this one, of course, is just a small little thumb drive. Uh, it, but it's a GPS dongle. Very, I mean, obviously, very compact. This, bit bigger, uh, but, you know, a bit more powerful. Uh, you know, and they'll really be able to provide plenty of functionality, especially if you're war driving, that'll allow you to geolocate different devices that you're finding on the wild. Now, of course, what would a home lab be if you can't clean it? And so I recently purchased this product, uh, but it was, I found it on Amazon. There's a link in the description, but this, I mean, it's so great. You're able to clean your devices with it. It's got, you know, a nice uh, rubber tip here to kind of, you know, scrape off stuff from your keyboard. It's got a brush to wipe off dust. For your screen, it's got this nice little pad here that you can wipe dust off the screen. Uh, and it's, uh, it's Velcro. So you're able to, you know, kind of do Velcro stuff with it. I don't know what kind of Velcro stuff you want to do with it. Do not comment down below what kind of Velcro stuff you're going to do with it. I don't want to know. And of course we have some discs. These are uh, both about a terabyte each. Uh, I use this one for my Mac, this one for my Windows. Uh, you know, it's of course super important that you back up your devices and you make sure that, you know, whatever progress you're doing <laughs> isn't lost, right? Uh, the worst thing you could do is fail to back up your devices and it's gone. So, you know, make sure, you know, I really recommend these two. They're Seagate, links in the description for those as well. Uh, they're, I mean, man, they are super helpful. Uh, they'll really, you know, they have so much storage on them. Uh, and they're very good. So with that, that's my home lab. Uh, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Comment down below with your thoughts. If there's anything you would like to get for your home lab, like this video if it was helpful and subscribe for more content I'm posting every week. Thank you.